day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glad each and every one who's made out on this, well, I guess, rainy, wet, and cool day. I believe fall is here. Finally, some people welcome it. I, I like summer myself, but I know many people like fall weather, like winter. Brandon wishes there was two feet of snow on the ground, so how about that? Uh, glad you're with us this morning. We'll go ahead. Uh, I've got a few announcements. I don't forget about Let's see here. I remember Tuesday nights at 7, of course. We've uh, been teaching. We really, over the past Tuesday nights, we've been teaching on uh, really an area of finances. But we're going to start here pretty soon on um, the book of Revelation. So if that's something that interests you, something uh, you want to learn about, we'll be teaching along those lines, Lord willing, on Tuesday nights. On Revelation, and then we always have prayer the last Tuesday of the month, which will be the 30th. Um, now, are all treats no tricks? We're going to do it the same night Lawrence County does. Um, it's trick or treat. Uh, I believe it's the 27th. So you can just plan on that the 27th. All treats, no tricks here from is it what, uh, 6, right? We'll start about 6 o'clock. So, you know, if, if you go out, I want to encourage you to go out. We'll just come back in and be with us, and you can finish off your night on the 27th. And then the 28th, um, Sherry here. I'm not saying Sherry this morning. Sherry this morning. Uh, she, what she told me, anyway, was that the 28th, the kids are going to be taking care of uh, the 11 a.m. service on the 28th. So they're all working out something with the kids on the 28th. All right, uh, any other announcements? Is that it? And I want to tell you, if you want to look into the future, uh, <laughs> December December on the 9th, uh, that Sunday morning, Harry Wilson is going to be with us at the 11 a.m. service. So if you want to put that down in your phone or in your whatever you do, and try to be out with us this morning, he's always got an encouraging word. And it'll bless you. And he does a great work, him and uh, well, others as well, in Guatemala. And he also brings coffee. Anybody like coffee? Maybe, maybe you wish you had a cup of coffee this morning. Maybe you need a cup of coffee this morning. But he brings in uh, fresh whole bean coffee from Guatemala, which is, is their primary export. It's available for sale, and it also supports his ministry. So like I said, December 9th, and I laugh because it comes in these silver blocks, and he brings in suitcases of these silver blocks. And I always say, well, have you ever been stopped in customs for having these suitcases full of solid blocks? To me, it looks like cocaine. It's like how they pack cocaine, you know, with solid blocks. He said, no, nah, he said, every now and then they'll cut one open, but he said they're just actually pretty common. So come out and support that December 9th at 11 a.m. So any other announcements? All right. Well, let's take up our tithes and offerings. I think I'm quiet in here. <laughs> take the tithes and offerings. Everybody should be quiet. No. We're thankful. Hallelujah. Thank God he has blessed us to be a blessing. And think of it like this. It's not a debt you owe, but a seed you sow. So say this with me if you, if you believe it. I thank you, Father. That you have blessed me so I can give. I give because I love you and I want to be obedient to your word. I give willingly from the heart. I give because I want to fulfill the great commission in this world. My desire is that the good news of the gospel of Christ be preached to the entire world. I give faith. I thank you for the return of my financial seed for the Son. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all stand with us.
Turn them lights on back there. Hallelujah. As they were saying, I had to look it up. I couldn't remember where it was. But, uh, Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know. <coughs> Be still and know. <laughs> Let's try it again. <coughs> Glory. Be still and know that I am God. Man, I'm going to have a drink of water here. Third time's a charm. I don't believe in charms. But here we go. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And as they were singing there, I just was reminded of how that in life it's so easy to get ahead of God's plan. And it's so easy to be impatient where we're at. And even in what God has called us to do, there's oftentimes an urge, and there is. We're all, we see so many uh, wants and so many needs and so many things that need to happen in our community, in our world. And we sense a desire and a, a compassion to, to go out. And so oftentimes, we go out without specific direction. And because if we go out without specific direction, we get ahead of God's plan for our lives. Now, Dad, he was, he's been teaching in, about Moses' life and how that, you know, God prepared Moses a great deal, you know, 80 years before he was actually to begin doing what God had brought him up to do. And Moses, in his early years, he had a desire because it was birthed there from God. He had a desire to set God's people free, his fellow brothers and sisters. And so what did he do? He, he saw one Egyptian beating uh, his fellow brother. And what did he do? He killed the Egyptian. And then we know how he fled into the desert. But you see, God has a timing. God has a plan. And you see, we need God's timing just as much as we need God's plan. They gotta work hand in hand. Hallelujah. God's timing and God's plan have to work hand in hand. And so often we become impatient. But we got to let have we have to have we have to let patience have its perfect work. That we be complete. That we behold that we lack not in anything. So walk hand in hand with God. Don't get ahead, because if you get ahead, then it's not his plan, you're doing your own thing. And God can't bless your own thing. He blesses his plan and his purpose. But walk hand in hand. Hallelujah. And accomplish that which God has called you to do. But be still. And there's sometimes we just have to be quiet. We get so busy and we let the cares of life and we let our task or assignments overwhelm us to the point to where the voice of the Holy Spirit no longer reigns supreme in your life. It's not that you don't want to hear God. It's not that you're not seeking to hear His voice. But listen, if you don't focus if you're always going, if you never take time to sit down and to discuss with the Father the next move, you'll wind up missing it. You'll let the cares of life, you'll even let ministry, good things, get in the way of God's best for your life. So that was for me as well as for somebody else this morning. But be still and know that He is God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, have you got home this morning? Tell you better, God say, I'm moving in a mighty wind. Things I see in the spirit you're praying for, God will do a quick work in this church, a quick marker. Things you sow and has been planted is coming. Uh, it's coming up. I see fruit from your labor you planted, and you water. I see sunshine for this time. It's been a slow process, but take action on God's word and act on it by faith. I see supernatural marker for this time. The church will spread deeper water. Step in, the water is stern, and don't miss your visitation. This is time to go out deeper with more compassion, with love and for it. God will bring the marker in that you're crying. It's not in vain. Expect changes and shift in the atmosphere. It's been, and look, a setback. It'll come in the fullness, but be ready and expect God to touch you, supernatural healing. No longer delay or deny your prayer. I see in your tears. Trust God. 
and believe it's on its way and Galgal's way. Jesus is passing by. Cry out for mercy and don't miss your visitation for this time. The door is open. Step in and this is God's will. I hear rain in your harvest and you'll burn much fruit. See as God see and you'll see suddenly. This is God's will for this time. Amen. Hallelujah. I came across a quote this week and I shared it on Facebook and I want to encourage you just on the side note. If you don't like and follow Bethel House of God on Facebook, please do so. Because at times as the Spirit leads us, not only myself, but others will post things on there. But I came across a quote by Smith Wigglesworth and it just, man, it's just great. So I want to share with you. Great faith is the product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcome of great tests. Great triumphs can only come out of great trials. I think that's so good, I'm going to read that twice, just so it seeks in. Great faith is the product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcomes of great tests. Great triumphs can only come out of great trials. And that is true. You know, First Peter 1.6 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory of the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing. You rejoice with joy and express one full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah, I'm so thankful that spiritually we're born again. We're whole and complete. But you know something? This body, this soul, it needs that renewing power. It needs the healing power of salvation that comes only through Jesus Christ. But let patience, hallelujah, we talk about patience in your faith though it may be tested. We know that great faith <laughs> comes through great fights. And your faith is going to be tested. Satan's going to try it. He's going to do his best to get you out of faith, into feelings, so he can rob you and steal from you and keep God's best from happening in your life. But I'm telling you, church, the day of miracles is not over. The book of Acts has yet to be finished. But no, there is, hallelujah. Before the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is going to be a great renewal in the gifts of the Spirit. There's going to be a great renewal in healings and miracles. So prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? You prepare yourself by spending time with God. You prepare yourself by spending time in the New Testament. You prepare yourself in the book of Acts. And have an understanding of what it is and what the Holy Spirit's dispensation is in this day of grace. What His role is and what He's wanting to do in your life and what He's wanting to do in the lives of others. It's called preparation. God is preparing you for what He has prepared for you. So let's let Him do. Amen. Let's let Him do in us the good work which He has started in us. But not only do it, finish it. Hallelujah. Finish it. Well, I, we got a special guest speaker this morning. Maybe you may or not know it. I'm going to ask Mr. James Martin to come up this morning, if you would. Come on up, Mr. Papaw. <laughs> he, don't, he don't recognize Mr. Martin for me. He's got to go by Papaw. But really, what the Holy Spirit's been impressing on me is really just to get back into healings and miracles. Just to get back into studying on these things. And uh, we don't want... But we don't want to impress, nor do we want to let these things slide by. Though we may not be seeing many things, but really we are, but sometimes we don't recognize them. But I'm talking about supernatural healings and miracles in our community and even in our body. It doesn't mean that those days are past. As I said, the book of Acts is the book in the Bible that you find that has no ending. It's continuing today. But Papa really, he, you know, he, he shared some things with me and and he's, I just asked him this morning to share his testimony about him growing up because really him growing up, you know, he went and experienced the different things and really there was miraculous things. So I just wanted him to share that with you this morning and, and we'll go from there. Thank you, Brett. I surprised when Brett called me this morning and asked me to do this. And of 
course, it's a true history, and you bear with me, it's a true history of my life. Now, I'm telling you this this morning, that I know along life's journey, many a times there's discouragements. There's times that we feel like we are put down. Why would it be me? But we, I've gone through this, and perhaps some of you today are going through it, and if you haven't, you, you probably will. But uh, I was born in 1934. I'm 84 years old. And uh, my father and mother, they were 26 years old, and they were very prosperous for the time. Of course, this was at the end of the Great Depression, but in eastern Kentucky, it didn't end as it would in many cities, and you know that today. We're kind of slow for things to come, but, and then they're slow for them to go. But anyway, they were very prosperous for the day. My dad had gotten him a pickup truck, and they had a little grocery store. Probably didn't have hardly anything in it. But I remember it was right by the creek, and it was up on stilts, so the creek could go under it. Bill, back there, would know right where it is, and Shane Karen. But anyway, uh, he, with his pickup, he would buy hogs and cows and take them and sell them, make a little money, maybe two or three dollars. But anyway, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Now, <clears throat> in uh, 1938, uh, uh, we went. Mom, where, where my grandfather lived, my dad's folks, was closer to Louisa than out of Cordell. So when my dad, they sent him to Asheville, North Carolina, to the sanatorium and to, for treatment to try to cure him. <clears throat> and evidently it was uh, something that burned his throat and so forth. He's never able to talk anymore. So death was sure. They brought him back to my grandfather's house, which was near Louise, so the doctor could come there and stay with him, or see, see him. So my mother went there to stay with him, and we stayed with my grandpa and grandma on brush sheet. During that time, my dad was sick. <clears throat> Bear with me. We only saw him one time. My grandpa took us, my sis and me, on a mule. He walked and led the mule. And today, as I look at the route that he took, it has to be around eight miles. Now Mark, where he lives, and where I lived at the time, he would be pretty, he'd probably tell you, I think it's a good eight miles. But he took us, we rode the mule, and he led the mule. We went to see my dad. And we rode that mule back on that. Can you imagine two kids? Now, look, I wasn't four years old. But we rode that mule. And I'm telling you folks, sis, I don't care what's wrong in your lives. You can overcome. The power to do it is within you. Now, if you want to throw up your hands and say, well, I can't do it. I'm just going to be. You'll never, you'll never get to where I am. But if I done it, you can do it. All right, now, my dad then, of course, he was, he was saved during this time. They baptized him in a chair. I remember this. You might say, well, he's pretty young, but I remember all this. Well, 
Now, when he died, my mother in the hospital owed $400. She sold everything, the truck, and everything he had to pay the 400 and barely came out. We went back to her folks, and they took what was in the little store and put in a room in the house on Steel Branch. You'd never see anybody hardly on Steel Branch. Would need to go to the store, you know. But in that time, we didn't have a farm. We probably didn't have a half an acre. All of the farming that we had was a long distance back to the top of the hill and what was referred to as an old new ground. This is what Britain, I'm sure, wanted me to tell you today. That during this time, uh, we take a sled, have our hose and a plow on it, and an old quilt. The old quilt was that where you put your little boy or girl in the bed to rest, she laid it on the sled for me to lay on. All right. On the way one day to that old new ground, I had gotten way behind, probably far and near farther, it's the farthest car over here. And there's an old barn right up by the road. And this is a history and a scene that went in my, I wasn't the best person in my life. The time of my life I sent until I was about 40 years old. But here's the thing that haunted me all my life. While I was walking on that stop with a sled up the road, and Mom hollers back and tells me to come on. But over that bar, and I'm telling you the truth, I saw an angel. I saw an angel, and I was not asleep. That angel come near the top of that barn and made me a promise. I'll take care of you. And all these years of my life, they stuck with me. Mom got sick, had pneumonia fever. They thought she cracked up, had a nervous breakdown. Didn't have doctors in. They had to come a long way. The doctor they finally decided to get the doctor after several days. And the doctor came to where Bill and Karen lives and borrowed a horse and rode on to where my mother was. Diagnosis was that pneumonia. She's too far gone. She, she can't live. But some of Kevin Sager's people, distant relative, came to Cordell Free Baptist Church. I don't know where he went to church. I don't think he belonged there, but he came there. He came with a man, I believe his name was Roberts. They prayed with my mother. After the doctor had given her up, I walked in that room and my mother, sitting on the side of the bed. Now you can believe, you might say, well, she's gotten well anyway. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know that after the doctor had given her up, they prayed for her and laid hands on her, and she sat up on the side of that bed. So I have told my family, my children, my grandchildren this, and I want to tell you this because I tell it, because it's uh, hoping that it would be an encouragement for somebody. I know some of you right now 
would have to go through some awful big hard trials. But at my age, I don't have any hope of big things in the future. But I do have one hope. And I'm well anchored there. This short time, the surely that I have to live at my age, and you all know that, you're going to reach that age. And you can tell when your health's failing and so forth. I have a hope, a true hope, that I live on. I believe I can live free from everything that there is through faith in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Believe in that, living my life the best I can according to that. I'm not discouraged because that hope that I have, it just encourages me to keep on. And I want to tell you today, you keep on. And you can overcome. And you can go to be with the Lord. May God bless everyone of you. I love you. Oh, hallelujah. Well, he, he talked about, but you need some help getting down. Yeah, you know, there. We got. Fat Valerie, 80, 80, how old are you? How old are you? He's 84. So he's 84 years old and from four years to 84. But, you know, he shared some things. There's some things I just, I want him to share that with you to, to let you know that, you know, I'm here because of what God did in his life. And you see, you know, I'm, he's my papa and we've got, we got dad and hunger over here. But uh, we see how that when he was young. And, and I'll tell you this, just to stir you up and know that the supernatural is real. Okay? <laughs> it's real. It just, this isn't just something that's been preached within the past 20 years. This, this is what Jesus demonstrated. This is what he told us was going to be happening in the church today. And really, it's a shame that more of these testimonies aren't available today. We should be having miraculous in our life on a daily basis. And I truly believe that. Do I have miracles every day? Well, I can't say I have a great second, but I, I'm, I'm getting better of recognizing miracles and believing for miracles daily. That's not saying that things don't come to test our faith. Well, we just had, you know, many of you know us, we just hand, foot, and mouth. It went to uh, uh, Bell, to Chloe, to Reese. <laughs> you know, we, we've had sickness and things encounter our house. But it, it, Papa, talking about growing up, how he saw that angel. That angel said he's going to take care of him. And there he is at 84 years of age, you know, him and Mamma. You know, he's been blessed with how many grandkids? How many grandkids you guys got? Ten grandkids? How many great grandkids you got? <laughs> so we're doing a good job of populating the family tree. But from ten grandkids to 19 great grandkids. And hallelujah, and he is still alive to witness it all. Amen. But you see these things happen. And the angel was faithful to his word. And, but his mamma, and really what I wanted to focus in on just a little bit, was mamma, mamma Merle. She lived to be, what, 86, 87? Around 86, 87 years of age. And Mama Merle, you got to understand, you know, having, you know, a young son, a daughter, you know, these days you're pretty much on your own. You know, you lived off the land. You didn't have Walmart to go to, and you didn't have a great uh, welfare check coming in or food stamps of <laughs> significant value to go out and to be able to support you. If you didn't grow your food, you starved. And so you can imagine a young woman losing her husband, having two young kids, and having to just uproot her family and sell all that they have, you know, all that she had to support her family. Well... As she said, she had a nervous breakdown, basically. As you can see, most people in that situation, in that time, if you put yourself there, you'd be under a great deal of stress. But she came out with pneumonia, and the doctor, as he said, had given her up to die. Well, he mentioned that there was a minister coming in, and really, you know, Cordell, it was still, you know, it, at that time, it was a denominational church. But this man, he, he believed in, 
and preached healing, hallelujah, and miracles. And when they went to the Ma Myrtle's house, laid hands on her, and the healing power of God came upon her, and literally she was raised from her deathbed. Raised from her deathbed, hallelujah. And healing is still made available to us today. Miracles, signs, and wonders are not past yet are to come. And why are they? Why, are they? Why, are, why should they be so predominant in the body of Christ? Because it is a witness and a testimony to the power and God's will for mankind. And God's will for mankind is to be whole spirit, soul, and body. And that's what he accomplished and performed through salvation. It's not only spiritual well-being, it's not also an eternal home in heaven, but it's victory in life now. It's victory over those tormenting spirits. It's, it's victory over those, the, the, the worry, the stress, and anxiety of life. It's freedom and victory over sickness and disease. You see, sickness and disease is not natural in the body. You see, sickness and disease came forth as a result of sin. In the Garden of Eden, you find that it was perfect. There were no sickness. There were no disease. There was no death. There was no thorns. <laughs> they, and even the animals and human beings were in harmony. But after sin, what happens? You find comes in sickness, disease, the ground is cursed, torment, all these things, anguish. One minister put it like this. Sickness is the foul offspring of father Satan and mother sin. And I think that is really a good job of explaining. But it is God's will for us. Why? Why is, why is it that God still wants to do miracles? Why is it that He still wants to do signs and wonders today? Why is it that God wants me well and whole? You see, because there is a message. There is a great work to do. You see, because many people, Satan has blinded their eyes so they cannot see. But the Word refers to us as being the light of the world. And as we go forth with our testimony. And as we go forth with signs and wonders and miracles back in us, you see, it causes that darkness. It begins to draw attention, not to ourselves, but attention to the God we serve, who is the God and creator of all. <laughs> he is Jehovah. Amen. He is, he is the I Am. Whatever it is that you need this morning, He is the God that's able. And not only is He able, He's willing. And He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. But you see, it starts with faith. It starts in simply what we believe. And that's why it's so important that we share testimony. That's, that, that's why it's so important that we believe God, you see, because if we're believing God for nothing, don't find it surprisingly when you receive nothing because your faith is being answered. No, but when we get God's Word on the situation, when we understand it, and then we believe God, hallelujah, we can testify. I was in a similar situation to you was. I was in lack. I was in distress. I was in poverty. But I got God's Word. I got His will on the situation. And I took that faith, the same faith He gave me when I was born again, and I applied that faith to His Word. And my situation changed. But I just want to stir you up this morning. Get back into it. Get back into Acts. Maybe you've read and heard read over it many times and when we get back into the healing script it doesn't matter refresh yourself renew yourself in these things don't grow uh, if, if you will asleep don't become asleep or lazy in feeding your spirit man in these areas and believing God daily that he's going to do something great in your life and I've even in my own life you know Papa talks to me and I believe hold early God saw the plan and purpose that he had for this area and he knew that they one day was going to be a church in this field in Adams, Kentucky. And God saw down not only myself, but time persisting in his plan and others. Hallelujah. And he saw this church here, and he saw the lives that it was going to touch and the lives that it's going to touch. Now, you don't always see the results that are accomplished instantly. Sometimes it takes years and it's even sometimes it may seem like things may go backwards. But you see, we do not see the end as well as God sees. For He knows the beginning just as well as the end. And He sees the end better than you know your yesterday. He sees tomorrow and understands it better than you know and understand your yesterday. 
But God saw how he had planned for this area. And he saw that there was going to be a seed come forth from James Martin. And we know how that, I don't say you know, my mother and father, there was others. But we see how Dad and Mom pastored this church for several years. And, and now that me and Lisa have been for several years. You see, God had a plan. God had a purpose. And Satan is always trying to steal and kill the seed. The seed. You see, what are our children? They are our seed. See, our children are our tomorrow. Now, I believe they are today, but reality, one day, time persisting, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be up in age, and I'm going to pass. That's part of life. And who's here? It's going to be my children. My great-grandchildren. My great-great-grandchildren. They're going to be present. And you see, all the things I have sown, all the things I have put into them, they're going to share with their children, their great-grandchildren. And that's why testimony is so important. So that's why I was just impressed to have Papa share. We don't want to forget about these things. Let's not forget about our history. And let's not forget to share the good news with our children. Let's not leave our children out. Satan is out to attack our children. He's out to deceive our children. And we have to be the ones that sow into their lives. We are the ones. It's not the school system. Because the school system is missing in so many ways in the things that they're teaching. It's not the celebrities, because the celebrities are messed up. It's, it's us as parents. It's us as fathers and mothers of faith to teach and train up and instruct not only our children, but really we're all brothers and sisters. You know, Amy... Amy has children. They're not my children, but they're my children in Christ. And it is my responsibility as well as yours to teach these children. Let's not forget because it's possible. You might say, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. How could that be? we got to understand the move of God. And this, when the way of signs wonder mirrors, it can skip generations if, we're, if, if we let it happen. But how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If we don't preach and teach it, there will be no faith for it. If there is no faith for it, there will be no manifestations. So I'm going to stir you up this morning. Get back. Believe in God. Believe God for healing. Believe God for miracles. It's not yesterday. It's not past. It's today. Hallelujah. Today. Everybody say, today is the day of healing. Say, today is the day of miracles. Hallelujah. And I can remember growing up myself. And just speaking... I, I was in my bedroom one night, and it, I, I got I got my whole Bible. I got my first Bible, and and I got notes that I took back when I was a teenager. And it's really even amazing looking back and reading those things. I'm like, well, I was pretty smart for my age. <laughs> I'm not bragging myself, but honestly, I read those things, and I'm thinking, how did I write that at 14 and 15 years of age? What was the? It was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was ministering to me and things. But I've been in my bedroom. And the presence of God becomes so strong that my bed literally shakes. You know, it, it, it would come in so strong that it would just shake, literally shake the bed. And I'd, I'd be like, oh, well. <laughs> kind of like, you know, it, it wasn't an earthquake, people. Nobody else feel, felt it. Nobody else experienced it. And I've never really shared that. I've been sick physically. And I've had dad and mom, I remember one time specifically, come in, lay hands on me. And I could feel instantly just the warm flow of the anointing and God's healing power through my body and instantaneously be well and rose up. But let's believe. Stir yourself up. And I've got to share this. It's really maybe silly. And I, I still, I, you know, other than just Jesus. And I, I'll give you just a simple. This is, to me, this is a miracle. It's small. But this just happened the other day and I shared it with a few people. But... We was, I was over at the gym, and, and Belle was over with me. Well, she had to use the bathroom, so she, she got out. She wasn't wearing no shoes. And she went down the wooden steps, went back over to the house. She used the bathroom. Well, I know she got down the wooden steps. She was limping as she went toward the house. And I said, well, she's got a splinter. And so when I finished up on over, I said, Belle, let me see her foot. And sure enough, you know, there was a splinter. You know, I've had several. I'm sure we've had several. You know what a splinter looks like. You know, not very long, brown, 
you know, in the skin. You know, I even saw just a tad bit of it, and I was like, oh, that's good. I saw a tad bit of it sticking out. I said, good, I won't have to get a needle and dig there and get it. I can just get a pair of tweezers and get it. So I went to the bathroom to get a pair of tweezers. I came back out, and Belle was crying because, you know, she wasn't happy. I said, listen, Belle, yeah. She, I said, does it hurt? She said, yeah, okay, it's a splinter. I said, I'm going to go get the tweezers. I'm going to be back, and I'm going to get the splinter out. She was crying because she just, that's Belle, okay? Y'all know Belle. That's just Belle. That's just the way she is. So I got the tweezers, and I came back in, and I got her foot, and it wasn't there. I said, Belle, uh, let me see your other foot. And uh, I couldn't find it. I got Reese. I said, Reese, come in here. I said, do you see anything in her? Am I missing something here? It's gone. I said, Bill, Jesus took the splinter. The only thing I can tell you. Now you might say, well, you just missed saw it. You didn't see it. I'm telling you, I saw it. <laughs> it was there. I know what a splinter looks like. I rubbed it. And she screamed because I rubbed it. It was there. It was present. And I, I didn't pray about it. I wasn't believing that it would be gone when I get back. I had full intentions of taking that thing out. But what I'm saying, I expect miracles daily. How they come, I let God determine. Some things I believe specifically. But I'm telling you, from the time I went to get those tweezers, the time I came back, Bell didn't move. It was gone. The only thing I can tell you was that's a miracle. It might sound like a small miracle, but that's a miracle to me nonetheless. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm saying, let's believe God. Hallelujah. Let's believe God. Keep your faith active. Keep the switch of faith on. You know, just as a light switch, you can turn it on and you can turn it off. Keep your faith always on. I'm not focused always on making sure that light switch is on. I turn it on and believe that the source and power is there to work light, to bring illumination to where I can function on a daily basis. Keep the switch of faith on when it comes to miracles. Sometimes it will be specific, but just believe. Keep an atmosphere of faith in your house. Keep an atmosphere of faith, hallelujah, as you go day to day. As you go forth as you're driving your vehicle. Believe. As you approach other people, believe, hallelujah. Believe. Believe. And God will perform miracles even at times, even without necessarily your consent. Why is that? Because you've kept the switch of faith on. You're constantly believing for God the opportunity to move regardless Knowingly and unknowingly. Keep the switch of faith on. But he will at times, he will speak to you specific to believe about specific things. Well, then, target in on those things. But hallelujah. Keep, everybody say, keep the switch of faith on. So hallelujah, I want to encourage you to do that. And then I also want to encourage you to testify about it. Now, if God does something, testify about it. Amen. Let's say, God's not done. He's only just begun. Amen. Let's all stand. Maybe a little different this morning, but just wanted to stir you up in those few areas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Oh, Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We thank you for the arm. Hallelujah. We thank you for the demonstrator. We thank you, Father, for the Helper. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, which resides in us and dwells in us and is assisting us and empowering us in all areas of life. Father, we and ourselves are not capable of doing anything miraculous. Father, we are not the healer, but you are. And we thank you, Father, that you're manifesting yourself. Not that you have to. Not that, Father, we, we believe. You, you, you have done everything for us. Father, if it was never another miracle or healing, we believe. But Father, I know that according to your word, which is your will, that it is still your will to work signs, wonders, and miracles in our midst. So Father, we keep, Father, myself, us as a body, we just choose to believe. We're just simple enough, though our mind does not understand it. We just believe that your word is true. And every man, any, any scientific fact, whatever it may be, is a lie if it be not according to your word. So, Father, we believe, and we keep an atmosphere of faith in our heart. We keep an atmosphere of faith in our family. We keep an atmosphere of faith in our home. Hallelujah. And, Father, we keep an atmosphere of faith in our church when we assemble together. Father, we keep an atmosphere of faith in our vehicle while we're driving, while we're speaking to somebody, and as we're at the job site. 
Father, have your way. <laughs> and Father, we give you permission, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you in faith, Father, to move in our midst and use each of us. Use us as the body of Christ, members individually, to perform and to do what, you, what your will is in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm not pressed to do anything else, so we'll just consider ourselves dismissed. And remember, as we said, Tuesday nights and, and uh, tr uh, treats and tr all treats, no tricks, uh, Saturday, the 28th, starting at 6. All right. Has anybody else got anything else? See you next time we see you. <laughs>